Welcome to World of Monsters, Everything Monster, and welcome to today's episode of Could a Facehugger Impregnate a... Well, today's question is, could a facehugger impregnate a werewolf, and well, what would it look like? And first of all, a facehugger strangles its victim. That's why how it takes control of the host. It strangulates it with its bony tail. A regular face hugger, therefore, I would say is a bit too small, a bit too weak to take on something such as a werewolf. Now let's take a look at this as a source of a reference. Uh, Alien 3. Alien 3, we had two versions. We had a face hugger or the xenomorph species uh, impregnate a dog, a canine, and a bull. Now these are very significant actually to our research today because obviously it was successful in both. Now with the first or the first version which got cut out and changed, it impregnated a canine, a dog. And a dog has a very similar face to or muzzle or head structure to a wolf. They're both canines. They're of the canine family. And so we know that that was successful and therefore it is possible for it to impregnate that kind of face or or be able to implement its embryo into that kind of face uh, structure and animal type and be able to strangulate that kind of animal. Now, the bull in the second version, the other version, the more CGI, well, it is a CGI version of the xenomorph, it impregnated a bull. Now, a bull is a big creature, but it wasn't a regular xenomorph or a regular face hugger. It was a queen or super face hugger or royal face hugger, that's the other calling of it. So it was a larger version of the face hugger and therefore it was predictably able to strangulate a full-sized bull and implement its embryo. Therefore, if you think of a werewolf being as a larger and more powerful uh, monster or creature than a human, the biggest human, then you would imagine that its strength or its neck would be between the power or strength level of a bull's and say a human's because a bull's neck I would imagine would still be more powerful than a regular sized werewolf. Now all this depends on the size of the werewolf but if we're talking about like a seven foot uh, kind of more common version of a werewolf then I would say that the neck would be not quite as thick and strong as a bull's. What do you guys think? So therefore, I would say that a regular face hugger would not be able to do it. The werewolf would freak out. It would pull it off, possibly consume it and die in the process because of the acid blood of the silicon-based uh, face hugger. But if it were to be a larger face hugger, such as the queen face hugger, super royal face hugger, then I think it would be quite possible. It would wrap that exoskeleton tail around the werewolf's neck and proceed to implement the egg into the throat of the werewolf. Now, do you know what's even more cool, even more impressive with these royal face huggers is that they are able to implement or breed more than once. They are able to implement more than one embryo into more than just one victim. So after proceeding with its actions with the werewolf, it would then leave the werewolf and proceed to find another victim. Hmm. So the next question is now, what would it look like? And I think the big question on everybody's mind when you speak of werewolf is would the xenomorph then, the werewolf xenomorph, have the ability to transform. The werewolf transformation itself is a fantasy factor, right? So we have to take into consideration what's more powerful in the lore or in our research right now. The biology or biology as we know it and can incorporate it into this moment or the fantasy, magical, or advanced biology aspect of the transformation. In short, I would say that 
if the werewolf was impregnated while remaining in werewolf form, then the new xenomorph that would come out, the chestburster that would t then turn into a werewolf xenomorph, that xenomorph would then retain more of the structure or biology of or the blueprint of the werewolf itself rather than the human within. And so as far as the transformation ability passing on onto this new creature, I would say that wouldn't likely be possible. That's a really tricky word to use in this whole fantastical science fiction type research, but I would also say that it would be unnecessary. And I'll further explain that when we get to what would that form of the xenomorph look like. Now this is based more on the science of biology that we already know being the higher or prevalent factor in this case. Now if the overriding factor would be the curse or the magic or whatever it is, that allows for the transformation to take place, if that would be the overwhelming factor, then sure, it can proceed and the new being, the new xenomorph, werewolf xenomorph, would have that ability, would have that curse upon them. So it all depends how strong it would be. But more often in movies, we don't see other creatures, other animals being infected or affected by this werewolf type curse, just mainly humans. We have seen canines and such in other movies as well, but it's mainly just humans. So if we take that into account also, then the xenomorph species, being a whole completely different type of species, is even more likely by the combination of those lores that it would not be affected by this werewolf type curse. Now the second thing I pointed out is that it wouldn't be necessary, especially aesthetically or by design, because if you look at a xenomorph, well, first of all, what would I imagine a xenomorph would look like? If it would be a werewolf xenomorph, it would mostly, I would imagine, look human. And this is based off the canon of the movies, not going on to the comic books and the video games and the toys. So looking at the movies, I would imagine that one, the xenomorph would have the jittergrade legs, which I am totally a fan of, and the new recreations of the xenomorph now, the, even the regular uh, human-based xenomorphs, do have the jittergrade legs. Just look at the latest uh, toys of those. The original form did have uh, regular plantigrade human-type legs. So this one, the werewolf xenomorph, would have digitigrade legs. I would imagine it would be a bit thicker, just as the xenomorphs of the Aliens vs. Predator movies of that universe, they made those xenomorphs actually a little thicker and more powerful looking in order to make them a better uh, competitor against the Predators. So I would imagine they'd be thicker as well. So the jittergrade le legs, thicker, more powerful bodies, and that's pretty much it. Oh, and one more thing, longer arms. Since the werewolf is a hybrid between a wolf and a human, and wolves are four-legged, humans are bipedal, so combining the two, and we often see that werewolves can walk on their hind legs, or their main legs, but then when they sprint or they go into a run, they use all four and they can kind of, in a way, gallop, right? So therefore, I would imagine that this werewolf would have longer arms than a regular human-based xenomorph, sorry, the xenomorph, but shorter arms than legs. It wouldn't be on all fours. So that's it, those three main things. That's digitigrade legs, longer arms, and a thicker overall body structure. And I say this, this is it, because if you look at the xenomorphs within, again, Alien 3, the xenomorph of the bull-based version and the xenomorph of the dog-based version are very similar. They basically look like regular xenomorphs that are four-legged instead of two-legged. That's the only real difference. You don't see crazy different spine structures. Um, or any other anatomical huge differences. They still have the elongated head structure and all that. So looking at the canon of the movies of particularly Alien 3, then we would go with that. Now, if you want to have a bit more fun with it, you can look at the canons of the, if that's how you want to state this, 
the canons of the comic books and the toys and those like to take it into more extremes fantastical more unlikely by the lore uh, versions and therefore the werewolf i would imagine or could imagine would be again thicker structured have more spines just be more aggressive and fun looking but in this video i want to take it more as much canon as we possibly can if you do consider alien 3 canon and the cut out parts as well because that's where we see the royal face hugger if not then the royal face hugger doesn't exist and therefore the answer to the whole question of could it be impregnated could a werewolf be impregnated by a face hugger is no it would just not be possible because the werewolf would be too powerful its next structure would be even too powerful so therefore why did i say that it just doesn't make sense it's unnecessary for it to have the transformation uh, ability well because if it would be a werewolf xenomorph and it would look like this then if it would transform back into a human based xenomorph wait a minute I just had an idea what if it would change back into a human that's just silly so if it could transform back into a human based xenomorph then how much different would it be again than that purely werewolf host type looking xenomorph the only differences it would have during the transformation is maybe it would get a little smaller leaner and its degenerate legs might change into plantigrade legs but not necessarily again because of the new versions and the arms would get a little shorter so is that a drastic transformation again maybe it's possible that it would keep that kind of transformation for the hell of it it wouldn't change the creature much it would just give the opponent a chance to run away or attack as this creature is transforming depending on how long the transformation would take but again aesthetically and for movie awe it wouldn't take place because it wouldn't be necessary for any dramatic effects it would just change a little bit physically and become a humanoid xenomorph which is already freaky enough and then again at full moon or whatever change back into the werewolf xenomorph form with again the three things thicker body degenerate legs if it didn't have them before and longer arms do you have any other ideas of what this werewolf full wolf form xenomorph would look like how different would it look like? and again with the name unlike in my other video could a face hugger impregnate a demogorgon check it out somewhere around here or after the video a demogorgon of stranger things we named that one a xenogorgon or a demomorph we just combined them but actually it should be a demogorgon uh, xenomorph so this should be titled or named basically a werewolf xenomorph as they do not actually combine those we just did it for fun but what if we combine it be a xeno xenowolf no that just means it's a wolf xenomorph so how about a were xeno a wormorph wormorph that sounds cool but it doesn't sound like what we're talking about a wormorph sounds like something different it sounds like a human that changes into some kind of morph some kind of appearance that has no understandable reasoning to its appearance all right so thank you guys for watching this let me know what you guys think do you kind of agree with me as far as the lore goes or if you want to push the lore a bit and the canon and more into the side of the toys and stuff to be more just crazy looking how would you make your werewolf look share some pictures some drawings with me i'll definitely check them out and first of all do you think a face hugger would be able to implement its embryo into a werewolf do you agree with me or not let me know down below until next time stay monstrous my friends and thank you for watching could a face hugger impregnate a here only at World of Monsters, everything monster.